Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching this video and spending some time with me. Today I want to talk about the very first thing you need to do if you want to be smart about money. I've been using this app for about three years. It's called uh, Mint. I use it in my, you know, through my cell phone and I also access it through the website. You'll be able to, uh, you know, to get to it at mint.com and I've been using it for free. Uh, so the things I'll be talking about in the next few pages, you know, I've not paid anything over the past three years. So the reason you, you know, you know, you need to use a system like this one is because in order to be smart about money, you need to know, right? That's the first point. You need to know how you are spending your money. You need to know your expenses on a monthly basis. It doesn't matter if you are single, if you are with a partner, if you have a family, you need to know you know, how you are spending your money. The second thing is, once you know, this will allow you to take action immediately. Sometimes, I, you know, I go through my expenses uh, on a monthly basis myself, and then on a quarterly basis or so, I discuss, you know, how things are going with my wife. And we decide to make some changes on the spot. Sometimes you'll see a subscription that you didn't know it was there, you don't remember that you had to return something and you see, or maybe you see some bank fees, et cetera, et cetera. So we've been saving anything between a hundred and $300 uh, on a quarterly basis with this, you know, over the past few years. Um, this also allows you to understand your yearly base. And I'm going to talk about this a bit later and also to implement some strategies when you know your yearly base. So let's discuss that a little bit. The yearly base is, you know, this is how I describe it, right? It's how much money you are spending per year, uh, meaning, you know, this is the smallest amount of money that I want to have in my expenses. And as an example, I'm just saying $40,000. You know, you can put here any amount you want. And so if you want to, you know, if you know that after food and uh, car repairs and gas and going out with friends from now and then and you know your, your kids activities and everything else and in between you are spending 40,000 per year and you know it's going to be difficult for you to go lower than 40,000 for whatever reason then that's your yearly base you may set your yearly base at 20,000 if you are single or 30,000 or whatever or you can decide you know if it's a couple and you're making a lot of money now, your yearly base could be much higher than this. And so once you understand your yearly base, and you know, actually you need to make some effort here, meaning if you know if anything goes wrong, you know, and I have to start cutting, you know, how what are the things that will be difficult for me to cut? So that will that amount will be your yearly base. And so with this, then you know, you can start thinking about strategies like maybe you realize when you go through this analysis that uh, you are spending, let's say, you know, 50,000 per year. And instead, there is a way for you to cut $10,000, you know, because you have some extras that maybe you don't need, that you didn't know about, or that, you know, you can organize in a different way. Maybe you can make, you know, those changes. And, you know, that's a strategy for you. Uh, you will find a lot of information out there for, you know, how to live with less and how to reduce your expenses further, you know, like being here at the bottom of the line. In my case, I try to be above this line, meaning, you know, I always try to find other means of, you know, increasing that yearly base so that I can do more things with my kids or that I can, you know, have another vacation, you know, through Halloween or Christmas or do some other stuff that I want to do with the family. And so there are several things that you can start strategizing for getting there. And, you know, if you don't have a job, maybe you need a job, nine to five job. If you already have a job, then you need to think about maybe, you know, having some side hustles so that you can increase this yearly base. Or maybe you just need to think about maybe, you know, maybe you've not have your salary reason for a few years. So maybe you need to discuss, uh, uh, higher, like an, a rise with your boss, you know, for the next year. Maybe you have, you know, some cash in your bank account. So then you just need to start thinking about some investments 
or maybe you feel like an entrepreneur and then you can maybe start a startup. Lots of strategies, lots of diff different things you can do, but it's very, you know, going back to the beginning, it's very important to know your expenses and also to know your yearly base. So let's see how we've been doing this. So what you see here is just an example, you know, uh, these numbers they see on the left are just an example. When you go into Mint, by the way, like this is uh, a real case, but I've, you know, I've hidden some of the numbers. Um, what we do, right, what I've done, it's I've connected all my bank accounts to mint.com. And I've also connected all my credit cards. And so when you go into overview transactions, you will see this type of summary. It will tell you how much money you have in those uh, checking or savings accounts altogether. And it will also tell you how much you have in credit cards uh, altogether. So let's suppose this is an example, right? So you have $10,000 in the accounts, but you owe $2,000 in credit cards. Then your net is $8,000. And so uh, it's always good to know the net because, you know, some credit card, you know, you may have $1,000, $2,000, $4,000 depending. So it's always good to know what's your net. So if you need to plan some expenses or so have some higher expenses, then you can think about that. And so then the tool, what it does, you know, and I, you know, I manage some of this on my cell phone, but then when I do this analysis on a monthly basis, I just come to the website. So you can see here, for example, all those expenses coming into the credit cards. So I have every single one of them categorized properly. So for example, this is my electricity bill, uh, you know, some taxes I had to pay. There is some interest from the bank account. You know, there is some money there, so it's making some interest. There is my paycheck. I can also see here when I get paid. Uh, I went to Starbucks, so some expenses. I took a couple of Uber cars. Uh, and then, you know, I bought a new domain for another website I'm building. And then I have some expenses for my kids, some music lessons. And, you know, and then the payments we make to the credit cards. So that's the second thing. Uh, I want to talk about, we have all the credit cards on uh, auto payment, which means that I don't need to worry about, you know, getting a uh, bill for uh, amounts that are overdue and stuff like that. The thing is the banks, I, I think they make it very difficult for us to pay these credit cards on auto payment. It's very hard when you go like in my banks to, you know, to find where to set this up. And I, I don't know, uh, sometimes I wonder if this is made on purpose. Anyway, so I've been able to set them up on auto payment. So whenever the amount is due and it's supposed to be paid, it just goes automatically into my bank account and it gets paid, you know, right, uh, right then. So with this, like, as you can see, you know, this is going to list you all the transactions for a particular month, right? And Yes, you know, sometimes over time I've been creating these categories and the system provides some categories by default, but sometimes I change them to my own categories for things that, you know, I want to categorize differently. And it's easy to, you know, once you do this for a few months, you know, then uh, everything is properly categorized and you can start understanding where the, the expenses, how you are spending your money. And what I was saying about those hundred dollars that you save on a, on a monthly basis or on a quarterly basis, it's because when you come here and you, yes, I go, to tell you the truth, I go line by line, right? So I check on a monthly basis very quickly, okay, this is, yeah, the bill for electricity, this is this, this is that. Sometimes there is a line I don't understand, maybe there is a check, you know, if it's a check of a significant amount, then I discuss with, like, with my memory, with my wife, you know, what that check is, so we keep moving forward and we understand how we're spending the money. So... The other thing we uh, get value from is this page, is the bills. This allows me to very quickly see the bills that, you know, how the credit cards are getting, when they are getting paid, basically. So as you can see, like a couple of them, you know, say you here, but this just because sometimes uh, some, when you connect those accounts, sometimes they get disconnected. And even if it's really paid in the account, it still shows as past you for a few days here. But anyway, like, you can see, you know, that July 16, July 11, you know, uh, I'm supposed to pay these amounts here. And then you can, you know, sometimes if you need to move 
you know, some money from one account to another, depending on how many accounts you are managing. You know, this is just a quick reminder of how, you know, uh, when to have the money in those accounts, etc. This is another section I spend some time on a monthly basis as well. So as you can see, this is a summary for that particular month. And so the, all those transactions that you see uh, listed in a list view and transactions, now you see them per category. So for example, you know, for some, it starts with your income and then it goes into the expenses. I do the same exercise for income because sometimes, you know, yes, there is the salary that you get paid, but sometimes the IRS makes a return back to you or uh, if you have uh, uh, an FSA for dependent care, sometimes, you know, the money goes back into the account. So I've set this up like in the past. So it carries forward any descriptions that you have set up in the past. And so this allows me to quickly see, you know, I'm, let's say, you know, I'm not expecting any money to come here. And if there is, then, you know, you very quickly can identify it. But when you go into the expenses, for example, let's say, let's say it's groceries. And for groceries, you know, that on average you spend hundred dollars per month. Then when you come here and it's $300, then, okay, you know, it's, you know, it's a red line. So then you can quickly check, you know, why that is and, you know, what happened. So you can spend some time there. And the other thing that we do is we, you know, at the end of the year, uh, we try to see a summary like this one. At the moment, this is giving us a month view, but you can also do this uh, yearly view. And the same for this one, you can go on a yearly basis and, you know, what it says this month, you can see for the past year. So what we do is we'll basically, when we have to do our income tax, I just get a summary of this and I quickly understand, you know, when I, you know, either for income tax or when I review our yearly base with my wife, how much we spent, you know, if there are any deviations, why those deviations are. And we try to put some strategies either for uh, controlling, those, controlling those expenses or for making a budget for next year or for planning, you know, how many vacation we want to do or for uh, investing some of the money, et cetera, et cetera. So totally recommended if you really want to be smart about money, uh, I really recommend that you use a system like this one or any other systems that are similar to this one. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, feel free to subscribe and share, you know, any comments with me if you start using this or if you use it with your, you know, tell me about your strategies and how you're using this. So yeah, thanks and talk to you soon.